Rolling. All right. Welcome, old family and new family, to Boom Bapt Capital ED. It is your co host with the most wrinkly shorts on the planet, Brandon White, aka <laughs> <K>. Bushido Garvey. <laughs> What's happening, Rochester? Yo, this be Atlas. Peace. Indeed, indeed. We got brother Rob Lowe on the tech. And ladies and gentlemen, some people claim to be about that life, but they ain't really about that life, or they're quasi about that life. These Tell people them. in the building are about that life. We have yeah. Afro and Fred in the spot. Uh huh. Uh huh. What's up? What's up, everybody? What's up, Rochester? Yes, yeah. yes. Welcome to Boom Bap, y'all. For those who don't know, Boom Bap, the capital E D, is an honest, open, and clear headed exploration of education and cultural issues focused on, but not limited to, the Rochester area through a hip hop lens. Welcome uh. to the show, y'all. Thank you, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you for having us. Of course, only right. So, Frederick Douglass and Afro, it's good to have you all in the house. We, uh, if, you're, if, if you're hip to the show at all, you know we like to do a little icebreaker, right? <clears throat> so, part of that involves um, you running down your resume, if you will. Give us a little... Quick intro, quick you know, overview, 30 seconds, one minute. What you do or have done, either in a professional setting or platform that you choose to talk about, and also what makes you tick outside of your work. Give us a little insight into who you are. Okay, I'm Frederick Douglass. Um, birth name, Jamie Solomon. Um, I was born in 88 um, to a mother. Um, my father wasn't there, you know, so I... Um, knew as a young boy that I had to um, respect the women that, you know, raised me. Um, and uh, that came to, you know, pass by like eight years old. I knew that I was going to serve people. I was going to be in, um, you know, social justice. I was going to be in performing arts. Uh, and I fell in love with um, just, I guess, myself as a, a black boy mm -hmm. um so that you know in turn turned into love for other black people um unapologetically um i moved to rochester when i was about 12. Uh, i joined a, a rochester step team um at frederick douglas middle school um, i worked with sean harnett um who was a really big influence on my life um i w also met um mr uh Blackman, um, A.B. True Blackman, um, when, when around 13. Um, and those are two men that came into my life at a time where um, I was coming into my own and understanding who I was, the importance of who I am, and how, what I bring to the table in the world um, uh, drives me to be um, an educator, um, a activist, a radio host, a um, advocate, um, a supporter of hip hop mm. and its many um, variations and expressions and how people express it. Um, I've been supporting local and international artists since I was about 14, 15. Um, and that's what brought me to like continuing to do that um, through radio and uh, through broadcasting and social media platforms. So. You know, I just tie that all into just me being a, a social activist and mm -hmm. Frederick Douglass being one of the most iconic people, photographer person in the world in mm -hmm. a century. Um, that's, you know, I adopted that um, same, you know, energy. And now the time is titled from uh, Jean-Michael Basquiat, who was a famous artist in the 1960s. Uh, so I, I'm really, really um, passionate and in, in, inspired by my history, my ancestors. So that's, you know. And for those who don't know, now's the time is a radio show that Afro and Fred do every Saturday from three to four. I get the times right, right? They're cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm Afro, um, born in Fado, Puerto Rico. Always been back and forth, education here, and then vacation at home. And um, switched it up for college, went back home for college, and came in mm. vacation here. Um, I study, I'm still studying double major in political science and government and criminal justice. Um, I do a lot of social work in the community. Um, what else? I'm everything he said. Because <laughs> 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 we do everything together. But um, I believe in the power of the people. I feel that uh, 
we have a lot of work to do within our own community mm -hmm. and I'm here for it. I started doing activism at like 14 and it was mostly for school while I was in high school because they were trying to budget, do budget cuts on things that were really important. <laughs> um, and now I still advocate for education because the youth are, is our future. And I also advocate for the people in my island and I advocate for our people here. Respect. Thank Indeed. you. Indeed. Yeah, 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 just, just, just briefly, Brother Bushido. So y'all strike me as like the... Um, epitome of partners because y'all are together y'all are a couple and y'all are like hand in hand arm in arm linked up with this work that y'all do in the community and it's just like seamless you know what i'm saying it's that's it, a whole fact it's Always a beautiful thing to see where yeah. i appreciate that that's, that's yeah. a whole fact yo yeah um because that's not uber common you know what i'm saying like to see to have that be in tandem and sync the way that it is like that's definitely a respectable uh, reality um we also do an additional icebreaker where we get a little bit more goofy, <laughs> right? So this is what I want y'all to do real quick. Pretend like it's 1985, right? And the two of you, in your synchronicity that you demonstrate all the time, have an opportunity to be the first rap duo that's a couple. Yeah. What would y'all name be? Remember, it is 1985 and y'all have the opportunity uh -huh. to be the first rap couple <laughs> signed to a major label. What would y'all name B. I think I'll leave that on you. <laughs> I, it'll be in Spanish. What would yours be? What would your at least rap name? If, right. Yeah, fair. That's Don't fair. try to yeah, duck yeah. the question. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> ducking <laughs> questions out here on <laughs> Boom Bap. Name, but what's the, what's the, what's your initial? Okay, my <laughs> rap name would be Bass boy, I guess. I don't. That's, bass player. Yeah, bass boy. Bass, bass boy. boy. Yeah, okay. Bass boy. I, I just, I, I would, I would go because bass boy because it's, it is timeless. Um, the the definition of bass in the two thousand and you know, six version, um, is to is a is a uh, a movement and a artistic, like way of thinking. Um, and then in the 1980s, bass would have been looked at as crack cocaine. Mm -hmm. So uh, to be addicted to um, the the lifestyle of positivity um, and fluence mm -hmm. and uh, just freedom of, of of thought is something that you know I would. This is a really deep be name definition. Word up. Like two seconds. This <laughs> yeah. is kind of crazy. Yeah. Bass boy. <laughs> All right. Mine is basic. I'm gonna take Evie Queens, like I'm Ayota, okay? Okay, uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Based boy and Evie Queens? Okay. Yeah. La Caballota. La Caballota. Yeah. All right, so our, all right. Our, our, our name together would be <laughs> El, El, El Base Boy. El, <laughs> La Base. La Base Movement. Or something. Yeah. I don't know. El Grupo de Base. Yeah, yeah. El Grupo de Base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There it is. Yeah, that is too <laughs> funny, yo. <laughs> All right. On to our uh, our general question. General question. So, um, as mentioned, you know, both of you have been activists, and you're you're not you're untethered. You're free from any overarching system per se, and you've also fought to produce change while being within the educational system. Both of y'all work within the educational system. Can you describe the success and the frustrations of doing both those things, kind of operating as independent activists and then also functioning inside of the educational system? So I feel like the for myself, the frustrating part comes when you just feel like you just can't, either the backlash, <laughs> the... Not only the backlash from what you'll get on the other side, but from the backlash on your own side of people. Um, and that's what hurts the most, when it's really hard to have that communication and understanding. Sometimes you, um, some people aren't, having, aren't available for conversations that are necessary to happen in order for progress to happen. Um, but then there's, uh, I feel like everyone has their own way of thinking and how to get to the same place, just different ways. Mm -hmm. So I'm still coming into terms and understanding that. So I'm working on my frustrations part. Mm -hmm. um, the successful part of it, I enjoy doing what I do because it's the right thing to do. It. I don't do it because, you know, anybody else needs to jump on this wagon, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Or 
no, it needs to get done, and somebody has to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel every day that whether it's not even that whether you point something out or not, but just every day that goes by, I'm just thankful and appreciative that I have the capacity and, and space to do this. Not everybody can, and not everybody is there yet on their levels of consciousness mm -hmm. and woke to be able to speak up. So I'm very appreciative of that privilege that I have. Respect. Yeah, and my perspective is the fact um, I lost a friend to a police brutality. Um, I lost a uncle to um, racial, you know, a racial issue. Um, he made a comment that, you know, was taken out of content and he was murdered and his murder was never, you know, no one ever had to deal with the consequences of taking his life. Um, they found any other excuse to, you know, legal, you know, you know, normalize, you know, people's death. Um, education is a part of that. It's directly a part of that because for if I would not to known the struggles of the 1960s and if black folks that were not in the education systems per se were there, but did not go by the books, if those people did not do what they did, when I was growing up, I would not be as passionate as I am today. And I wouldn't be as confident in myself and what I'm doing if it wasn't for those people. So um, education is very important to me. Um, going back into the education system and working inside of classrooms, something that I was told I was gonna do when I was 16 um, or 14, 13, little, when I was really young. Always Teachers used to always tell me, teachers that really got to know me, um, always told me that I was going to be something very special and do something very, very special. They didn't understand what it was. Um, I've even had teachers had, you know, provisions and dreams about me, you know, mm -hmm. and seeing me when I got older. Um, actually, Sean Harnett is one of, one that told me about a dream that he had um, where he was just like, yo, me and you were working together, you know, and he was just like, I, you, he's like, you looked it, you like, you looked it different. And he's like, I could tell you it was your adult version. He was your teacher at the time? Yeah, he was my yeah. mentor at the time, yeah. yeah. So he was just like, I had to share this with you. He's like, because it, so, it was so real. Um, and he, he left and went to, you know, California. And he, he, he has a school out there now. And I've seen him in 2007, like when I graduated around that time. And we talked real quick. And he was just like, bro, like, I'm hearing a lot of crazy stuff about you. Um, and it's good and bad. He's like, and... I would say that to say that people that are talking against what you're doing, they're afraid. They're literally afraid. And Rochester is not ready for what's going to happen um, and what, what you are bringing to the table. And I appreciate that because that was before I started, you know, being a part of Black Lives Matter or... That you know, was pre-BLM? Yes. Wow. This is 2007. So this okay. is... Yeah, right, right. right, like, right. I, I, I didn't understand it until... You know, 2014 came and this this feeling of urgency came upon me. Uh, organizing started happening with young people in Rochester and I just wanted to be a part of it. So I joined uh, Building Leadership and Community Knowledge um, in 2015 and I started organizing nationally uh, from there. I just started reaching out to organizers uh, nationally uh, with, you know, Mike Brown situation, the uh, Travis... Um, um, Tremere Rice situation, um, um, even, you know, when India Cummings was murdered in February, yeah. Um, yeah. the um, Say Her Name organization reached out to me. Right. Um, so that was something big and to get support because um, her mother wasn't getting support. So they reached out to me because they like, yo, we see you out here, you know, posting this all over um, and national, and we're not getting, you're not getting national coverage and this is a um suspicious situation and yeah. that's what keeps pushing me and i keep doing it um you both mentioned this work that you've done uh, for black lives matter and it's very clear that you and you two and others have played a critical role in expanding black lives matters function in this region definitely in the city but even outside as you you point out india cummings and a lot of that situation is based in buffalo Right. Um, I know that she went to Wilson with us and all that, but like, you know, it's based in Buffalo. So it's the Western New York region. In regards to the Western New York region, y'all and, and other folk are really responsible for exp expanding BLM out here. 
BLM is not without its critics and criticisms. Um, and in this work of you expanding and really getting into that work um, of, of fighting against police brutality and, you know, just fighting for rights in general, there's been a, like, you know, a lot of governmental backlash. This, this whole black identity extremist thing. There's even been like community backlash, right? Where, you know, members of community, you know, have criticisms or critiques about uh, Black Lives Matter. Um, what do you, how do you handle those uh, cynicisms and those doubts that exist within your own community? You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like that's the least dangerous thing. That's mm. one of the least dangerous things we deal with because it's just a lot of miseducation in our community and a lot of unlearning we have to do. And what I mean to say by the least of my worries is that with this work comes more dangerous things than just that. Mm. To me, that's that's what I like to do. I want to educate. I want to have dialogue. I want to conversate. Um, you might see some passion out of me, but we can mm -hmm. definitely have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, but so you welcome the tough conversations. It, I, I caught. See, I I had to differentiate. I had to work this after building leadership and community knowledge. Um, I took some time to work on myself, and I had to work in understanding that it's, it's we can't just create safe spaces. We have to create brave spaces. Yes. Yeah. And with brave spaces come difficult conversations with possibly even tougher people. But that's okay. It's a part of the work and it's extremely necessary. I've also realized that like just like in traffic, you have different lanes to go different places. We and, and we can go all different ways to get to the same place. We all have different ways and different roles to play in the community. Some people can't handle working in the system. I worked for the county in DHS. I did it. I'm able to work in there, but I'm able to, you know, finagle a little bit depending on the role I played. I was teaching at charter schools. I did as much as I could for advocate for my kids. Um, but not everybody can do that. Some people are more in the streets, are able to do it in the streets and just work yeah. different jobs that don't have to do within the system. But I have a different, I'm able to play that role and I appreciate that um, because that's the privilege and the understanding that I have. Not everybody get, you know, everybody's at different levels and stuff. So um, I definitely, I definitely feel that out of the work we do, the most dangerous comes with the government and law enforcement. Like, mm -hmm. the second day, I think it was two days into our new place, a whole new place. There's no cameras around. Mm -hmm. After they put a camera in our last home, there is, wow. like, yeah, they put it right on the corner of our building. Damn. We were living in mm -hmm. a complex. So this time we picked a house. Yeah. And um, when we moved, the second day, they're surrounding our house. There's, like, freaking 16 cops surrounding our house. Or at least they have vests. They're dressed in black, have vests to say police. And they're like grabbing on the door, trying to break in, grabbing on the glass. Like, we're like, what the heck is going on? And they're saying that they're the police. Come to mm. find out there's no record of it. It wasn't the police. They had like eight undercover cars. I had someone go around one of the allies and count the cars and everything. That's wild shady. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys saw the video of Corinne Gaines when they were like yeah. at her door. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm scared mm. of. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what I fear. Not to say that I have to fear a human being because we shouldn't, but like I fear that I may not live past 30. I'm only 26. Right. But because of the line of work that we're in, we have a possibility of being a statistic and not making it to a certain age, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was, it was. It was more along the question was about like how do you deal with people in your own community that have criticisms, but you, as you eloquently put it, that's not even like the major concern. You can have a tough conversation with somebody. It's just the uh, the shady government op operatives <laughs> that maneuver in very real ways. Um, and you know, y'all have told me stories. Uh, you know, other members from Black have told me stories. Um, and it's just it's just wild to think about. But, yeah. Four weeks ago, we just I just got an email from Facebook saying that we must have been involved with the um, the electoral hack with the oh, Russians. Oh, real? And stuff wow. Pertaining to the India coming events. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got like three emails. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. that's the reason why when you are talking to people on well, when you're talking to uh, the Frederick Douglass page, you are actually talking to Afro. 
Mm -hmm. Um, I have, uh, you know, stepped away from um, that Facebook uh, situation because I understood that it's all ran by politics. Um, The fact that this connection got brought to, um, you know, platforms, media platforms and India Cummings situation did not. And the fact that they were able to say um, the work that I did with, and this was Con- yeah. literally computer, like social media work that I did with an organization called Blacktivist, um, that you yep. connect what they were doing and what you know to what I was doing, yeah. and mm-hmm. to for p- people in the you know in the um, political world um, in in Western New York who. Uh, prey on situations of people's ignorance and stuff like that. That's who go and they expose stuff like that. They they feed onto stuff like that. Mm. Um, for folks that believe that, I, I I feel bad for them because those people are followers. They yeah. literally don't have minds of their own. Um, because you're blinded by the fact that a 26 year old healthy black woman was murdered in Saudi of a Erie County holding center and no one was held accountable. Uh, she's been dead for now two years. Yep. Her mother has no justice. Um, Tawana Wyatt is her name. Um, India Cummings is the daughter of Tawana Wyatt. Um, the, the the Rochester City School District has not said anything about yep. it. Um, the uh, city uh, of Rochester, the mayor has not said anything about it. And both understand that she graduated from Wilson Madden High School. Right. Um, class of 2006. So... Um, her life does matter to me way more than any Russian optimic whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. You can't drown out what I'm done and doing in the community. Yeah. Uh, you can't put any dirt on my name. Um, I have nothing to hide. I do this not for myself, but for the those that came before me and you know will come after me and will be here after me. Um, I don't do work as a gatekeeper. Because yeah. I know, I understand the opposite. The opposite of that is a person that is opt is 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 a closer of that, mm-hmm. is the controlling of of destinies. Um, I am, you know, I am definitely a person that is very focused on equal opportunities, yeah. um, and I am very very passionate about um, supporting those that do that and live that that way, um, and don't. I'm not into photo whopping. I'm not into biting my tongue. I do not. If I don't reach out to you, if I don't show you any type of love, if you don't see me around, I, you're not doing anything that I feel is is worth it. Yeah. Um. So the folks that I do reach out to, the folks that I, you know, do, um, are you know, I try to do as much work as I can with. Um, it's because I appreciate what you do, and I'm gonna continue to do that. Um, so for anyone that doesn't want to work with me, you know, for any reason, um, without, for, without well, talking to me, investigation, right, without yeah, talking yeah, to yeah, me yeah. and things like that, um, you may be li- missing out on a lot of opportunities. I'm, uh, um, yeah, uh, Fred, I'm really, I'm really glad you said that. Cause, um, and, and then we can skip my, my other question. We'll just hop to yours, but I'm, I'm really because that when I asked that question, I know one of the criticisms has been like, well, you know, Russian hacks or, you know, like the whole George Soros argument or all, all that stuff gets used by our people and outside our people to try to belittle or pass off the work um, that y'all have been doing. And the fact that you kind of just cleared up the reality that you and I would assume many other blm activists um have experience where it's just like well you know if there were hacks like they ain't had nothing to do with me and it has nothing to do with the actual injustice like the injustice is the injustice is the injustice if the russians are trying to manipulate it the same way that the russians try to manipulate things in the civil rights movement that didn't mean martin luther king jr wasn't right it doesn't mean that action didn't need to be taken you know what i'm saying like so i'm, I'm glad that you kind of made that uh clarity um about your point for sure let me also say that the news article, CNN wrote an article on Blacktivist, and it clearly states that what the 45's administration was saying was that this organization was magnifying and bringing exposure to certain situations that had to do with racial justice yeah. to manipulate the election. How does 
magnifying injustices, manipulate the that's, election. That'll inform the uh, yeah. <laughs> electorate. Right, 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 <laughs> man. Yeah, and I, that, and to your point again, Fred, it's just like, and actually Malcolm X said this. Um, you know, political parties and political ideologies like to play political football with our struggles. Right. And whether you're liberal, you try to punt it around that way. You know what I'm saying? If you're conservative, you try to punt it around for your, you know, and say like, well, you know what? Like the Russians did this and da, 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 da. But then when you're liberal, it's just like, well, this is our struggle of our America. So we need to change our America. Go for our agenda, even though they won't do much either. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it, it's it's a it's a it's a chess game. They like to play with our realities. You know what I'm saying? And it's very frustrating. But my fault, Aaron. Yeah, it's all good. All good. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, edit, thinking about my edits. But, uh, so, so we're, we're nearing the anniversary of the, uh, Black Lives Matter march here in, uh, Rochester, where dozens were arrested and all kinds of wildness, um, went down involving the police and such. Um, wrongly arrested, I'll, I'll, I'll mention. Can you describe what that experience taught you? What you learned about planning? actions about the city's systems about uh how the city works and can you talk about also the impact that you feel that that, that march had um what i learned was i learned a lot of who was who that day okay. uh -huh. i learned a lot of who was who days after that day um hmm. photo opping is so real in our community i didn't think the right. phoniness got that far but it exists it's here the hypocrites are here too and that's okay. Um, we just gotta like filter through these folks, you know, uh, but also not exclude them because mm. this education is there. Mm. Um, I, it, it did exact, it, I don't think none of us really saw what was going to happen. I think we, when we made the plans, I wanna say a lot of people think that everything went left because we went two different directions. It was as planned. Mm. It was a tactic, a strategy. You have to minimize the the law enforcement mm -hmm. because they're on you from the jump. Mm -hmm. Once that gets minimized, your message gets a little louder. Mm -hmm. And so don't misconstrue. A lot of people have that mis misunderstanding of that event. Um, the next one is July 7th of this year. I think that that rally specifically magnified and actually showed a lot of people with like sapphire getting arrested right while she was mm -hmm. interviewing um justin and yeah. um what's her name just as that news reporter yeah that justin got arrested. and um, yeah. Car um carlotta no no her name is not carlotta carlette 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 clear carlette clear yeah, yeah. got arrested and like even though they still sit there they're like i don't know why we didn't get arrested you were the only mm. black news mm. reporter there that night. Right. So that's right. why you got arrested. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of people are still in and out, but it it showed in these videos and so much footage, just like a two hour and a half, two and a half hour footage right on East Avenue Alexander that floats around on Facebook every year. And it, the police brutality is here. It, it, you don't have to look as far as Sandra Bland, yeah. Corinne Gaines, mm. um, a, a Philando Castile, you know, Alton Sterling, you don't have to look that far. It's right here in our city, in our communities, in our own backyards. And I think for a lot of people, that was an eye opener, too. Hmm. Some of them, even though they're still in denial, you can't deny what footage shows. Mm -hmm. You may mm -hmm. be like what the white supremacists do mm -hmm. are in denial with videos, but that's what you saw. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I'm hoping that this year they have I don't know I don't know what to expect from RPD I don't know what to expect mm -hmm. from the mayor I don't know mm -hmm. what to expect from the city at all mm -hmm. but we're hoping that this year um, if, if if it doesn't go well if it does people learn from it you yeah. say that's July 7 right July 7th this year all right okay. yep yeah. De more details coming soon just go on the Black Lives Matter page rock no doubt hey, um unfortunately we gotta close up this episode um is there any other contact information or, or, yeah, any other information you want to put out there for people to, you know, reach you or reach out how to be, be involved or get more informed? Yeah, uh, Black Lives Matter Rock um, is a Facebook page. Um, the events are on there, and there's a closed page, an open page, and the event page. Um, Frederick Douglass is our, our Facebook page. Now's the time, 585 on Instagram. And live me is now's the time. 
and now's the time yeah um i'm i'm trying to really make that be um a platform for um conversation artistic conversation um as well so um and then moving it and having us a, a platform where it's always on the go i'm always able to mm -hmm. be mobile mm -hmm. um so yeah that's really the most more more important part of it um that to use um social media for your 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 gain mm -hmm. um and yeah take advantage of it appreciate or the opportunity no, man. Yeah. Frederick Douglass and Afro, we appreciate y'all really being out so there, much. you know? Word. Real. Indeed, yo. Um, check us out, please. At, um, Boom Bap Radio. See, now I'm all mellowed out because it was a real serious conversation. <laughs> but uh, Boom Bap Radio every thir Tuesday from 1.30 to 2. Uh, check us out online. Check, us, check out our Facebook group. Um, thank you for listening. Thank y'all again for participating and having real conversation with us. Indeed. Peace, peace. Peace. <laughs>